Makara. It is a Hindu Buddhist mythological sea creature, so yes, it can swim. This creature is quite well known in the Hindu Buddhist community. At least its carvings or sculptures are always found in the temple walls, at doorways or archways, and even at the corner of the roofs. The sculptures on the roof corners usually serve a double function where it's both symbolic and acts as a rain water drainage system. So other than India, it can be found in the surrounding countries and even around Southeast Asia, especially in Indonesia, Laos, and Thailand. Now this creature is very peculiar. The description of the creature is so haphazard that it reminds me a bit of the Tarasque from the French mythology. The description of the creature varies throughout Asia but the most interesting and quite detailed description of the creature came from a temple architect called Ganapati Stapati who described it as a mythical animal with a body of a fish, has an elephant's trunk, lion's feet, monkey's eyes, pig's ears, and the tail of a peacock. Even so, the most common description of it is that it has the body of a fish, an elephant's trunk, rows of sharp teeth, and is big enough to ride on. This is apparent because it is depicted as the Vahana, the mount of goddess Ganga of the Ganges River. Vetala They are a creature from Hindu mythology that resembles a ghost or wraith. They would lurk around cemeteries or anywhere that has an abundance of cadaver. This is because they would possess corpses for them to go and get human blood or even to eat human flesh. The corpses they possess would stop decaying and is not bound to only human corpses. Animal corpses could also be possessed. If they have to, they could even possess living beings as well. Now the Fatala has no real form and uses the bodies it possess as a means of travel. Maybe for them, it's easier to control things rather than travel in a spiritual form. The Vitala came from souls that are not in peace, especially when their family haven't performed their funeral properly, which is believed to cause them to be stuck in the twilight zone between the living and the spirit form. Reciting certain spells or mantras will scare the Vitala away, but to appease it and get it to move on, a proper funeral ceremony of its original body is needed, because if you destroy its possessed body, it would just jump out of that body and into a different body instead. Modern beliefs believe that the Vitala can be killed with a silver weapon because most monsters in a lot of culture and mythology, including Hindu mythology, can be killed or destroyed with silver. But older myths of the Vitala shows nothing about silver. Farasi Bahari The Farasi Bahari are magical water horses found in the sea. Apparently, they live at the bottom of the Indian Oceans. They are also known in Malay mythology by the name of Farasul Bahari. It has a similar name because the Malay culture now has been influenced by the Indians in the past. But this particular creature is almost forgotten. So these creatures are said to be green in color and would come out of the water on certain days of the year to graze at the coast. It was believed that the offsprings between a Farasi Bahari and a horse would produce green horses that has no lungs. Thus the offspring would be able to gallop as fast and as long as they want without running out of breath. Now the Farasi Bahari would flee at the scent of humans, so people who want high-performance horses are known to leave their horses near the area where they believe the Farasi Bahari would be in hopes that their horses would mate with them. Pishaka They are flesh-eating demons and can shapeshift or become invisible whenever they please. Other than flesh-eating, they are evil through and through and is believed to be the cause of many mental ailments. Stories of them can be found in old Indian mythology in both Hindu and Buddhist mythology. In Hindu mythology, they are believed to be created by Brahma. Brahma, who was the god who created knowledge and the universe. They are said to have a dark complexion, including red eyes and bulging veins all over as if they are constantly angry all the time. Now, these creatures don't just eat human flesh, they eat human energies as well. They would possess you, suck out your energy, and would play around with your thoughts, memories, and even your sanity. Just like Vitala, they like to hang around cemeteries and charnel houses. Then it is also believed that the Pishaka has their own language they use between themselves. So the surefire way to kill a Pishaka is unknown, but to drive them away, a certain mantra should be read. Also during religious functions, festivals, and even funerals, sometimes an offering is left specifically for them to keep them away from disturbing people. Airavata 
This creature is a pure white elephant that in Indian mythology is the mount of god Indra. He is also the leader or king of another 15 elephants that are said to hold up earth. These 16 elephants are said to come from Brahma, who opened the cosmic egg while reciting mantras. They manifested from the eggshell and they were born as calves, where 8 of them were male and the other 8 were female. Aravata, the leader, is said to have 5 trunks and 5 pairs of tusks. In Thailand, Aravata is known as Irawan and is depicted as having 3 heads instead. You could see them depicted in flags. Then another description of Aravata is that of Vishni Purana, where Aravata is said to have 4 tusks, 7 trunks, and is pure white in color. So with so many differing descriptions of Aravata, what we can be sure of is that it has more than one trunk, more than one pair of tusks is always white in color, and of course, is an elephant. Now in mythology, Aravata is always around water. There's one story where Aravata reached down to the underworld with its trunk, then it sucked the water the underworld has and sprays it into the clouds causing the spread of rain. 